Want to sleep like an elite athlete? I know I used to want to. They push their recovery to the max in the name of high energy, mental toughness, and domination. Oh, so why do they call you the GOAT? <laughs> but many of their sleep methods are interesting. So Roger Federer claims to sleep around about 12 hours. Usain Bolt, the famous sprinter, um, slept somewhere between nine and a half to 10 hours a night. Then of course, we've also got reports of Ronaldo sleeping five times a day. Sleep is probably the greatest legal performance enhancing drug that few athletes are abusing enough. But claims and methods seem shrouded in dishonesty by poor journalistic communication and financial incentives. It's not helping with what's been dubbed a sleep loss epidemic. And it is fast becoming one of the greatest public health challenges that we face in the 21st century. What really goes into the secretive recovery routines of elite athletes? I went to the man who showed Ronaldo how to sleep with some of the most elite clientele for answers. Because the advice I've seen has always seemed over the top and dare I say it, very suspect. If sleep weren't a normal thing, it would be a banned substance. It is the most powerful thing that everyone has in their toolbox and so few people use. This is what won me World's Strongest Man 2017. This was the game changer. What are we actually witnessing here? And is there actually any truth in this? Sleep is the ultimate luxury. It's time to find out what is really going on here. Lately, I've been extremely low on energy. My solution is to reach for the caffeine, which results in more tiredness, a vicious cycle that repeats over and over. The reality is, this is the norm for most people, and this cycle is encouraged by drug companies, social media, and the entertainment industry, with Netflix CEO stating sleep as their biggest competitor. This is not in your best interest. The shorter your sleep, the shorter your life. But when you look to the people at the top, it seems incredibly secretive and unconventional. You hear of Michael Phelps sleeping in an altitude chamber, Djokovic bringing his own hyperbaric chamber to the US Open. I mean, just look at some of these sleep facilities. The more you look into it, the more bizarre things get. There's wristbands that monitor motion will show when and how often his athlete's sleep is being interrupted. It's essential for good performance. To recover the bodies, to sleeping well. And so, sleep. Even after months of research, I still couldn't make sense of it all until I came across this man. So after promising an unbiased video on the topic to those inside my body transformation workshop, it was time to get to work. Over the next 30 days, I'll be attempting to sleep like an elite athlete, as guided by the sleep coach used by Guardiola, Ferguson, Wenger, and countless others, providing you with an actionable plan at the end. Now, you're watching this on YouTube because I believe this is extremely important for everyone to see. I have two blood tests. For the first, I took a month off all supplements, only consuming my regular diet. The second test will be after 30 days on all of these supplements while applying the advice. I'll track changes to cortisol, testosterone, magnesium, and many more biomarkers which can help with sleep. Now, before we go for a day in the life, we need to cover the fundamentals. Okay, so why was Ronaldo sleeping for 90 minutes five times a day? You see, Little Hills athletes view sleep differently. They view it in cycles instead of time. There's different crucial stages in sleep. The time to go through each of these is around 90 minutes. Wake up in the middle of a sleep cycle and you'll probably feel groggy. If you start thinking cycles rather than, I've got to get my eight hours, then five 90 minute cycles is 7.5 hours. There's that sort of optimum 30%. 15 minutes in, 15 minutes out, gives you that sort of area of eight. This is what Ronaldo seems to be doing, just in a weird way to fit his routine. But. This doesn't explain the bizarre amount of sleep that athletes reportedly get. We've got Roger Federer, LeBron James, and Michelle Wee claiming around 12 hours a day. Why does it seem like elite athletes sleep for so long? They might be allocating that amount of time to sleep, but whether they're actually sleeping during that time is a completely different matter. I don't come across any athletes in, in my world and by default other associated athletes like you've mentioned, where that's probably just a thing that's that's put into their marketplace saying, well, I allocate this amount of time to it, but whether they do it or not is another matter. So it makes much more sense to take reports with a pinch of salt and look at sleep cycles per week. When you choose to fit these in, it's going to be down to your own lifestyle. And this helps take the pressure off a bad night's sleep. The strategies you're about to hear come down to priming your body and environment to achieve this. You can't manage what you cannot measure is the saying. 
Wearable tech claims to provide impressive insight into sleep metrics. In fact, in 2020, the NBA purchased 2,000 aura rings for players to wear, as they can help determine when an athlete is about to be ill before symptoms. This is one of the reasons I've wanted one for so long. They genuinely look useful. For now though, I'm gonna be using a basic sleep diary. Obviously, it's not as high tech, but I'll give you access to this at the end of the video. Just make sure to not be too obsessive. There's already a, a medical term called orthosomnia for the increased anxiety and stress that's created by, oh dear, my sleep went down, my sleep quality went down, my deep sleep went down, and what does that mean for my day or the rest of the week? This is why elite athletes focus on the factors which influence sleep, and this starts as soon as you wake up. Blue light is the first factor, which is important for setting your circadian rhythm to optimize your energy levels throughout the day. It's not about just getting outside, you know, it's, it's not about just getting the nice fresh air and going for a walk. There's a hell of a lot going on here. And then when you get that really nice balance, wow. It's why athletes prioritize getting morning sunlight and Nick likes to install daylight lamps to promote wakefulness. Because when your body senses sunlight, it shuts off the melatonin production. So you, when you wake up, you're not groggy. You literally just wake up yeah. like, oh, the day has started. Now this sounds very Liver King-esque, but it is actually something to take seriously. Light viewing early in the day is the most powerful stimulus for wakefulness throughout the day, and it has a powerful positive impact on your ability to fall and stay asleep at night. Of course, light isn't the only energy boosting factor, with the record-breaking Liverpool 2020 squad and many others reportedly mega-dosing caffeine before games. Is caffeine abuse common in elite football? Common, Josh. There has been a growing uh, addictive behaviour to a number of factors. Those are all the little things that you can access without prescription. You mentioned them, caffeine, sleeping tablets, melatonin supplements, CBDs. The list is endless. This darker side is something you might have suspected. When you think of the pyramid or you think of the iceberg and above the sea line, you can, you can see that there's been a, an increase in these things being used for all sorts of reasons. When you look below, it's much greater and it's growing much faster. You just can't, it's not being revealed as much. Were substances a secret behind elite athletes' exceptional energy levels? Because I wasn't convinced it was sunlight. Interestingly, Federer's 12 hours of sleep doesn't come in one block, with two hours of his time dedicated to getting a 90 minute sleep cycle in the day. You see, we have a natural lull in energy around 2 p.m., which is why Nick recommends a short recovery period here. Just do something, even go for a walk, sit outside, play a few more chords on your guitar, because you never get time to do it, you know? And uh, don't think of it as a waste of time. It's a, it's a 30 minute slot, it used to be called a nap. It's actually a polyphasic performance recovery tool. It'll make you more productive. You'll get more out of your day. You'll stop wasting valuable time sleeping without benefits because your motivation, your mood, and all of this sort of stuff is in a much more harmonious place. So why is it the most important 30 minutes of your day? I've just mentioned enough and there's even more. Something you might want to consider in this slot is a caffeine nap. If you're doing it every day, then you can do caffeine, bang. If you fall into a micro sleep at your desk or even with your headphones on where you're sat right now, then the caffeine will just slightly kick in as you're coming out of that 30 minute period. And then you can use things like light. But the more you do it, whether you sleep or not, the less you need those things. But this will seem fairly simple. And my goal here is to maximize my sleep. So where are these more advanced techniques? Around one to two hours before we sleep, we want to start feeling tired. So you very much think about moving from bright blue energy lights to diminished light, like candle, yellow, that sort of thing. This is why Harlan wears blue light blockers before bed. Not keen on looking like an Elton John tribute, then consider bulbs where you can remove the blue light from. Just be careful not to accidentally create your local red light district. Now, of course, there's many supplements which can seem extremely beneficial for sleep. The one that uh, seems to be in my world is magnesium and potassium. You put them together and they become quite powerful. Of course, these in supplement form aren't essential. Supplements can, can help with that process, but you can get all those little things that you need from a nice, healthy, balanced, semi-plant-based, five-a-day type of approach. A lot of footballers seem to use supplements to help them sleep after late kickoffs. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm going home, celebrate with the family and have uh, come on my tea and sleep. <laughs> That's it. 
This is one of the things I took. Even though I am more skeptical when it comes to supplements, I took a fair few to test against a healthy diet. What would you say to people who are using like alcohol and um, drugs to help them sleep? Good luck. A lot of products, including sleeping tablets, are available online without prescription. They just arrive in a brown box at your door. And if it's called a sleeping tablet, maybe that's what it's for to help you sleep, just like a painkiller. But it isn't. It's a highly active drug that's only used to sedate and reset and should only be used for a very short period of time under specific clinical reasons. I do have a fair few cool sleep products now, but I still felt there was more out there. Was it the sleep environment? Federer made headlines when he rented out two houses during a competition, one for him, the other for his family, so his sleep environment was as optimal as possible. Before home games, Man City players sleep at their state-of-the-art $200 million recovery facilities. Then we also have hyperbaric chambers, backed by some fairly convincing evidence. This is what won me World's Strongest Man 2017. This was the game changer. This was my perception of elite athlete recovery. Secrecy, extortionate individualized approaches, and questionable product placement. It can be difficult to make sense of it all, but if you learned one thing from my mistakes, let it be to focus on things in order of importance. I strongly believe most people should invest more into wellness, but marketers like to inflate the importance of their products. Sure, they might help, but good sleep isn't something exclusive to the elite. Sleep, unfortunately, is not an optional lifestyle luxury. The way we achieve high level optimized recovery is because we've gone down that journey and we can sleep anywhere, anytime, any place, up the side of a mountain, hanging off a cliff. What a lot of this comes down to is being in tune with our natural processes. And it's not about fancy products. It is really your, if you can bring into your room in any way, through colors, visualization, sensory, anything you can do to make that feel a little bit more natural orientated, then what you do is you're able to adapt any environment to suit what you and your brain need to optimize your recovery. And you take the emphasis away from the sort of, dare I say it, marketing bullshit that comes with a lot of products. This stuff doesn't need to be expensive. In fact, when coaching the wildly successful UK cycling team at the Tour de France, Nick achieved black hole blinds by taping bin bags to the windows. I'm not suggesting you do this. Your neighbours will probably think you're a serial killer. But what I was hearing was drastically different to the headlines and advertisements. The media likes to shock you with just how important sleep is. I'm not going to argue with that. But if you think back to when you slept the best, it was probably when you were a kid. Now things have changed, when it's the highly individualized 1% gains which get presented to you as the secret behind athletes' careers, with marketers convincing you you need sleeping pills to sleep, sleep gets sensationalized and people start to overlook the basics. Athletes travel to faraway places with many sleep challenges. They aren't all sleeping 12 hours a night hooked to machines with magical contraptions. Sleeping like an elite athlete is about being flexible with your sleep. What's your secret? Because you're showing no signs of slowing down, Chris. No secrets. Don't exist secrets. Pioneering tech and supplements are great in the right situation. I've always loved this stuff. Maybe a bit too much. But the second you become dependent on a ring, tech, or endocrinology to sleep, you've already lost. We have a lot of knowledge and a lot of research, and we have the ability to do so many more things, and it will keep coming. But there's always that sort of thing that it's still a human being. And so you do have to step back a little bit and just go, let me just remind myself, I am Josh. This is what makes me tick, fueling up, hydration, recovery. That's what makes me tick. And the more I'm in line with that, the better I'm going to be to deal with everything else that's coming along. And sometimes it is nothing more than just stepping back and reminding those things before you go off doing anything else. Okay, so here's my results before the sleep experiment. All biomarkers were good. Yes, some of the metrics were improved further, with supplements maybe providing a small benefit, but a nutrient-dense diet was sufficient. My energy levels are now more stable and I'm less dependent on caffeine. But if I've learned anything from the months of research, individuality, consistency, resilience, that is how you sleep like an elite athlete. Master the basics and maybe, just maybe, you don't need that fancy product.